What's up, Ziggy Sway fam? The title of this video is I called my ex and this is what happened. <laughs> so, who this person is or was to me. So, this is um, someone that I was with for a year and a half. And when I was with this person, uh, whether I realized it at the time or not, um, I had become very committed to this person. I wasn't cheating, I wasn't messing around, but I also may not have completely known exactly all of what this person meant to me, but I was committed. Um, my focus was that person and building a better life for myself. I have a lot to say, so please be patient with me. I can express this and maybe you, you guys can relate. Maybe some of this happened to you. Anyways, this is somebody I was with, I loved deeply, and uh, we shared a lot of time together. It is a lady, um, she would sleep over my house a lot, um, took me on vacations, and we would spend a lot of time together. Um, this is somebody, like I said, I was committed to and cared for very deeply. So, um, also our connection ended horribly, ended very badly and it caused me a lot of depression, um, sadness, to really get outside of myself. So, and, and, and even during our ending time, the catalyst of the cause of us uh, breaking apart was I had a mental breakdown and it had nothing necessarily to do with her. It had something to do with um, an outside influence like a substance that I had taken um, and it changed me mentally. Um, and there was a healing process for that or during that healing process, um, she began to talk to somebody else um, and basically began cheating on me. Now, we didn't have a um, spoken title, but we were exclusive to my knowledge and at least on my end for at least a year. And like I said, we spent a lot of time together. Her family lived out of state, my family lived out of state. I traveled with her to um, meet and be around her family she traveled with me and being around my family and stuff. I'm sorry, I'm recording on another device and it's uh, doing its own thing. Anyways, so you want me to get to it, I'm gonna get to it. Um, anyway, the way it ended was she ended up cheating on me, left me for someone else. Um, I kind of pleaded, you know, for things to go another way and you know, asked if we could fix this, you know, and um, she, she said we couldn't. And, you know, in the next breath, you know, she basically telling me well, she's with somebody else now. And I had no idea. And at the time I had no idea she was already sleeping with this other person. She was sleeping with both of us at the same time. So, um, yeah, she basically, I basically got ghosted and, um, you know, it was very hard for me. That was hard for me. I was dealing with, you know, spiritual things, mental breakdown and things like that, even before that happened. And she couldn't handle that, you know. Anyways, so I called my ex and this is what happened. So I called her, she answered. And we had a four hour conversation, four hours. So in that, four hour conversation um there's a lot that that happened hold on hold on real quick hold on. i apologize y'all yeah, multitasking so in that four hour conversation um a lot of communication was exchanged and mostly especially by the first half of it or whatever was just kind of surface talk you know nonsense if you ask me she is a person that overall just talks too much um, and it was just a lot of surface nonsense talk about what she's been doing and blah 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 now I will say this I did see her once I'm going on it's almost three years since this has happened and I will tell y'all this I've been mostly single not mostly I've been very single for this time period from the time she left me through now and um, I feel like, in a sense, I was kind of waiting, in a sense, but not just waiting idly, growing, 
myself developing and becoming who I am. Um, when I talked to her, it was a lot of selfishness in there. Um, she did say and express in some words that she did a lot of self-growth and things like that, but the proof is in the pudding. So um, I'm gonna just tell y'all, the biggest thing that stood out to me was something that she said that she had learned during her self-growth. She also said that she was in a, in a space of just kind of spending a lot of time alone. Um, and I'll tell y'all, this conversation has been about two and a half weeks from this date that, you know, I'm filming this. And um, in that time space, I've um, been reflecting, learning, and getting spiritual um, leadership in regards to my movements and what's going on and things like that. So, um, and just, you know, divine connection and stuff like that. Anyways, so she said to me, you know, some of the things that she learned, and I think I didn't know that she was going to say this. She said, but it was confirmation to me. She said, one of the things that she learned, she said that there were lessons learned between us, and I 100% agree. Um, she said that I probably, not probably, but I taught her the biggest lesson of her adult life. And for me, you know, that just goes to show that, you know, some of the effect that we had on one another. And she said that I taught her and showed her that she can be truly loved for who she is. And she said that up until that point in her life, she said she had never been truly loved or accepted by in basically by anyone for just her being herself. Um, that in itself is a mouthful. She said that she learned that she could be loved for just being herself. She said she'd never been in a relationship or with anyone where she felt loved as herself. And that's deep. Um, so to me that goes to show a lot it goes to show that um, you know I wasn't completely off when I was thinking or trying to feel like we had a really really deep connection but anyways it also goes to show a lot of immaturity now this person was juggling me with somebody else you know I was in and out of the hospital at the time um, for break breakdowns and things that I was having again I told you guys um, I had taken a substance and it broke me mentally in a way and I had to um, heal from that and it took took some time so she was juggling me and someone else cheating on me and she even I don't know if you guys know this but she had even told me back then before she cut me off that um, she was crying to me on the phone and said that she was cheating on me but in this four hour conversation we had, there was never an apology. There was, if, there was never um, accountability on her end for what had been done. Um, so to me that shows a lack of growth. Now me, I did, you know, confess and admit that I can understand how some of the things I had said to her and my actions about dramatically just kind of moving away and, and um, my breakdown, I understood and I, and I re communicated that to her, that I could understand that that would hurt her. Um, but I also communicated to her that I never knew she was hurt. She never told me that she was hurt. And the, f the first day that I knew that she was mad at me or hurt was the last day that we stopped talking was the day that she cut me off and that's a three year break you guys um, so for a person to come to this realization that me that this person that I'm on the phone with you know that she's referring to me is somebody who loved me for me and I never had this in my life and you still choose bullshit excuse my language over this person.
to me that shows um, a lot of pride and a lot of ego um, and just not willing to um, completely see things or live your life for, for what it is. Back then at the time, I also felt really felt like um, she had people around her that were fake friends, um, jealous of what we had, and maybe even she herself felt jealous because she didn't know what to do with some energies. Um, but I feel like, and I always felt this, even when we were dating before the third person came in. And by the way, guys, I'm just going to put it out there. The, the person that she cheated on me with was somebody that I used to work with. And that shit hurt. It hurt my pride. It hurt my feelings and all of that. Um, but even still, I was still calling her even after she cut me off. I was still, you know, hoping to fix things because I felt like she had been bamboozled. And I felt like, you know, it was the other people because I knew some of those people that she had been involving herself with. And I knew them before her and probably more than her in a sense because I worked with them. She didn't know them at the time, you know. She knew me. But when I started going through my transformation, um... And let me say this. I'm just going to import this here. God has to a lot of time. God has to break you down before he can build you up. And I feel like in a sense, I can relate to Nebuchadnezzar. And if you know the Bible, then you or you can read it up on that story. But God has to break you down before he can take you to where you're going. And in that breakdown, a lot of times you can see or people get detached from you. You know what I mean? Some Everybody can't go where you're going. So anyways, um. I felt like she was being lied to by these other people and I felt I knew my name was being drugged through the mud and she didn't confirm this on the phone call I knew this back then um, when we separated um, I knew this because I was getting phone calls people were calling me and saying hey this is going on do you know this is going on do you know such and such is with such and such like that's you know that's messed up and because I'm getting these phone calls, I knew that my name was being drugged through the mud. So I felt like this person had family members and friends and people around them that just didn't want to see them win. You know what I mean? And being with me would have been winning. And that was her. That's a confession that she made is that I had a person in my life, which is me, who loved me for myself. And I've never in my life been loved that way. So... Um, I want to wrap this up I don't want to take too long on this But in this conversation um, There were still a lot of things not said There was no apology There was no accountability And um, a strong point um, She did say She said I wanted to hurt you And she said I wanted to hurt you The way I had been hurt And she said I hurt you for things other people did to me She said, I hurt you for things other people did to me. And then she expressed a little bit of some, she said she had childhood trauma and things like that. She said she wanted to hurt me and that she hurt me for things other people did to her. I feel like I'm, you know, doing the work <laughs> that I need to move on in my life and, you know, to keep soaring um, from a lot of, um, things that I've been learning um, there may have been spells cast on me there was definitely people gossiping and this was a team effort to tear me down mentally emotionally physically and I felt that shit I did I felt that I went through hell about this nobody likes being cheated on I was cheated on and left for this other person and somebody who I knew before she did and I knew the character of this person it's complete downgrade I knew the energy of this person um, even so me and this person had already met each other before she met this person and that other person when they split up or things weren't working out with them they started calling me trying to get answers from me the nerve of people so for my friends and family who watch this video um, and people who know me they may not know some of the details that I just said um, this I guess it's therapeutic in a way and 
and I'll be honest, there was um, some text communication even after we spoke after that four hours. And it just let me know, like, this person really hasn't grown. You know what I mean? She hasn't done the self-reflection. I'll be honest, I feel like I was waiting, but I wasn't waiting idly. I was steadily progressing every moment of the way. Um, and, you know, she just never gave me what I deserved. And it, it was, it's always about her, even now, you know, it's, I can see that it's it's always about her. It's not reciprocated. And to be honest, y'all, I think had she just come clean and just apologized and was and, and would be honest about what happened and about what she did and her true feelings, um, that maybe we could have had a friendship or something else. Um, but I, I just want y'all to know, people who love me, that you know, I'm, I'm a, waking up to what happened to the bullshit that went on, um, and waking up to my better self. So I just wanted to say that I just wanted to talk about it. Um, that I had a four-hour conversation with my ex-girlfriend, um, somebody who was important to me, um, and somebody who truly hurt me. But um, I'm trying to get off of here. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to wrap this up. You know, it's been a minute since since we've been here. But it was very important for me to let y'all know um, how I'm feeling. I feel like I'm moving on to the, 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 the next chapter of my life. Um, and I do want to confirm it for y'all who are thinking this. I'm a real person. Like, when I love, my love is genuine. Like, I'm, I'm a really good catch. And I'm human, I make mistakes. But this person just never came to me about the mistakes that I made. They went to other people, and the other people they went to were people who were trying to get me to cheat on them in the past. They weren't good people. So for my people that's watching, I really appreciate y'all because y'all give me solid advice. You know what I mean? When I'm wrong, you tell me. The love is real, and I don't keep no fake people around me. So every transformation that we go through as humans... Some people stay and some drop off. Not everybody meant to go to the top with you. And that's, that's for all of us, you know? Some people get cut out and it's really because of their own doing and their own selfishness. Uh, anyway, that's that. I love y'all. Peace.